Have you ever found yourself in a worship space and you're saying things like, I'm not worthy enough, I'm not worthy to be in your presence, I'm full of sin. Yeah, it's time to change that language up because that's actually not how God speaks about us and it may just be harming you more than it's doing you good. Hey everybody, my name is Kiara Salome and welcome to my channel. Before we go ahead and get started, I just wanna say thank you for watching, thank you for being here. We got a lot of stuff to talk about today. So if you're here and at the end of this video, you really liked what we talked about, what you heard, if you learned something, I want you to go ahead and like this video, comment on something that stood out to you. And if you're really liking it here, I want you to subscribe because we're back, okay? So I really wanted to make this video because I have came from a really long journey of learning how to feel at home in my body again, learning how to find my individuality, learn who I am in Christ, learn who I am as Kiara. And I, a couple of years ago, I found myself in a place of really deep self-hatred. I was very disconnected from who I was. Um, it was really hard to exist in my faith and also be fully like myself or fully be comfortable with myself because I had no idea who I was um, um, I had a really bad relationship with myself. I had a developing relationship with God, but I had a really bad relationship with myself and it was doing more harm than me to me than good. I spoke really ill of myself and honestly, I just feel like it's about the time that I start to use my voice again and talk about the things that I've went through and what I've learned and what I'm still learning and I wanna share them with you. And this is one of the things that I really, really had to hone in on because it was damaging. It was really damaging to um, my relationship with God in this temple, in this, this place that the Holy Spirit lives in. What I felt like was me being humble was really a false version of humility. And I was making this place even more dirty and even more difficult for God to dwell in and for me to feel comfortable in. I mean, if you're going to live in your own skin, wouldn't you want to feel comfortable in it? So. As you can see the title of this video, it is called Self-Deprecation Is Not Worship. You're probably wondering, well, Kiara, what does deprecation even mean? I've never heard that word before. And it was funny because the first time I actually heard this word was in a song by KCJ. Um, I think it's called Journal. And she was talking about her, her testimony and how she became very self-deprecating. And she realized that God doesn't say these things about us so why was she saying them about herself so what does deprecation mean deprecation means the action of not approving of something or saying that you don't approve of something so just imagine the word self and deprecating basically what that means is you are acting in a way or speaking in a way that disapproves yourself which is funny because God approves of you God not only approves you but he approves of you. And as he takes you through the process of being sanctified, God speaks well of you. He says wonderful things about you. He thinks wonderful things about you. And even though when we start off, we may not be the most Christ-like, he still says those things about you because he looks at you in the form in which he's already done the work. If you know, you know God sees the end from the beginning. So God speaks of you in a sense of the work is already done. He speaks of you from the end of what you're supposed to look like in him. But us ourselves, because we're living in this present body and we are presently here, it's very hard to speak well of ourselves if you don't truly know the value of yourself, all that stuff, but we're gonna get into it. So I have a few notes here um, that I wanna share with you all and how to get ourselves out of this cycle of speaking bad of ourselves. First of all, we all know that the Bible says there's the power of life and death is in the tongue. We know how powerful our tongue is. We know how powerful the things that we say are. And you know, if we can be honest with ourselves, the, the power of your tongue is a general spiritual law. Anyone who is spiritual, whether you're Christian or not, but we're over here speaking as believers 
we understand how powerful of a tool our tongue actually is. By definition, worship is just a deep admiration and honor for a higher power. In that same sense, we all as individuals, we have different expressions of worship. I've seen many expressions of worship and I've also done a lot of expressions of worship. You see people express worship um, by, they sometimes like, you could be very quiet and really to yourself and very intuitive. Sometimes people are very elaborate with their expression. They lift their hands, they, they do a lot of things. Some people dance in their expression. Some people sing in their expression. Some people write in their expression. Some people draw in their expression. There's so many different expressions of worship. Some people speak, some people use, use their art forms as expressions of worship. But at the end of the day, we understand that worship is an admiration and an honor um, and a praise and a love for higher power. So I feel like what happens in the church sometimes is that we can get stuck in a place where we make an idol out of our expressions, right? You may see someone who their expression is more elaborate than yours and you feel like you're not doing enough when God doesn't really care to look for the expression, God looks for the heart. And I want to start with idolatry because this might not make sense when I say it, but as I explain it, it will. Um, you can find an expression of worship and still not know God. You can find an expression of worship and still not necessarily be saved, um, especially if you grew up in the culture of being in church. It is so much easier to mimic an expression of worship and think that you are worshiping God. So when I finally learned and understand what worship was, that's where I started to actually develop a relationship with God. But the funny thing is, is that we kind of live in a culture where in worship the things we choose to say in worship or in honor of god is a reflection of the mindset that we have of ourselves and it's also taught so i don't know if you ever noticed but like when you go to church you'll hear you'll hear people say stuff like i'm not i'm not worthy and i'm not um I'm not righteous and I'm not this and I'm not that and I don't deserve this and I don't deserve that. And if you continue to say those things to yourself, about yourself, in a sense to, I guess, better your worship experience, what you're doing is you're telling your mind that you'll actually, you'll actually never be good enough. Not only for God, but for yourself. And that's, I feel like that's where the, the root of the problem was and so a lot of people have developed this thing where their identity is wrapped in being nothing and then you come to find out later that you don't actually know yourself because you spent all this time telling yourself that you're nothing that's not worship and the only reason why I say that's not worship is because if you read the New Testament if you know that you're saved if you know that you are in covenant with Christ those are not things your father says about you. Self-deprecation, especially in worship, it's easier to kind of navigate and it's kind of, it's easier to live your life when God is very active, when you're kind of in a honeymoon phase, when you're in a bliss with God, it's easier to navigate. But at the same time, this is a very subconscious thing. Remember when I said there's power in the tongue? It's a very subconscious thing that you're doing. So what happens when God is silent? What happens when you are in a season in your life where you're going through refining? When God is not coming through like he used to? When God is not speaking? When God is not telling you what to do next? Now all you have left is these deprecating thoughts you have of yourself. So because God is not speaking and God is not doing anything, it makes you feel even more bad. And that shouldn't take away from the fact that, like when God is silent, it shouldn't take away from the fact that you ought to still be confident. You ought to still take care of yourself. You ought to still heal. You ought to still speak well of yourself and speak well of the God that you serve. But when you're so busy being 
almost worthless in God's sight, when it's just you and God isn't speaking, he's there, but he's not speaking, how do you view yourself? Because how you view yourself plays a vital part of in how how proactive and how you fit and how efficient you are in the world or how proactive and efficient you are in the very current thing that you're supposed to be doing so what i realized is because i was so definitive in my thinking in the sense of an airhead or i cannot think unless god is always telling me what to do this is what happens you end up having a very micromanaged relationship with God. Meaning, if God is a father, at some point, the father has to take training wheels off um, and let you figure things out on your own. He's with you, yes, but let you figure things out on your own, let you really experience life, let you learn lessons. Um, and also too, when we're in relationship with God, we're really in partnership. Let's put it like this. If you have the mind of Christ, which we do, we have the mind of Christ, and you grow in his word, you grow in knowing how the spirit of God moves and how God speaks and what God, how God thinks, how God does things, how God um, maneuvers situations. There's just some things, and people might not like I have to say this because we live in a culture where people always feel like they need to um, pray about every single thing, which is good. Um, but I, even with that, I want to hit on that point. You build this micromanaged relationship with God where when he takes his hands off of certain things, because you should be able to handle them on your own because you have the mind of Christ, because you have the gift of wisdom, because you think within the likeness of Jesus, we panic. We panic because we're so used to being micromanaged. So this goes back to the point I make about praying about everything. Because the Bible says pray about everything, I think we internalize it as ask for everything and expect an answer for everything. You do know that, that, there's, that there are some things you're allowed to make decisions yourself. You're allowed to make decisions yourself because Christ gave you a mind to think with. It is okay to be rational. It is okay to use your logic because there is something called common sense that is holy. There's some things that you should just know to do. Nobody should have to tell you, for example, to help the poor, to help somebody in need, to love on some. Like, you shouldn't have to ask for permission for certain things. So there's this, I, I remember seeing this trend on TikTok, and it was saying, oh, me needing to go ask God for everything because I don't know what to do. That shows that you lack maturity in your relationship with God and your relationship with yourself. Not only do you not trust God to lead you, but you don't trust yourself to make proper decisions. Why? It is because we've allowed ourselves to be micromanaged. At some point you have to mature. At some point you should be able to think with, for yourself without feeling like you're going to fall off your path of salvation if you make a decision or if you, if you decide to do something and then later on you realize maybe I shouldn't have done that. All of those things are a part of a life in Christ. And all of that is proof that you actually live in the spirit because living in the spirit doesn't mean that you walk on eggshells or it doesn't mean that you like you're tiptoeing around everything to make sure you always do the right thing. It just means that you're always conscious that God is guiding you, that God is with you. Even when God is silent, he's still with you and you're living in the spirit. And I think, I think when God is silent, that is the best time to really exercise your mental strength and your emotional strength and your faith and trust in God. Because now I've gotten to a point where I was like, okay, God, you know what? I'm going to make this decision. I'm going to do this. If it's wrong, you'll detour me. If it's right, I'll continue. If it's wrong, you'll let me know. If it's right, you'll let me know. There's just some things in life that you'll never entirely know if it's always the right decision especially if you're someone who struggles to hear the voice of God. So here's this. When you don't prioritize actually building a relationship with yourself as well, meaning getting to know like what areas in your soul need, needs work, spending time with yourself, 
you don't know what your voice sounds like. So you're confused with all these other different voices. Yes, you probably know how you think, but if you really sat down with yourself and you really knew what are priorities to you, what values do you have, what matters to you in the future and in the present, you understand your voice and then you can distinctly know when God is speaking to you and when you're speaking to you. And quite frankly, it's not a problem that you hear your voice and you want to listen to it. Because if you walk with God, you should be able to trust yourself. I'm going to say that again. If you walk with God, you should be able to trust yourself. Why? Because in Christ, your heart is circumcised. In Christ, you're walking through sanctification. But people don't make their sanctification easy because they're not willing to sit down and hear their, heal their soul intentionally. Yes, you want to pray and fast, but you don't want to take therapy. Yes, you want to go to worship services, but you don't want to actually sit down and question yourself why did i feel this way why does this trigger me you don't want to remove the certain things that are in your life um or you don't want to take a break from certain things in your life to really understand your soul you don't want to listen to what people have to say about you god gives us tools to better our quality in life and while it may not be the same or easy for everyone the tools are there but all this has a part to play in what self-deprecation really does to you. Because when you, the, the worse you speak about yourself, let's just put it like this. If you say really bad things about a friend, um, you're always degrading them, you're always doing this, and they are aware, what they're gonna do is distance themselves from you. Eventually they're not gonna talk to you. So just imagine, when you speak very ill about yourself, you distance yourself from you. Eventually you don't, you don't know your own voice. You don't, you, you're disconnected from yourself and in the silent seat. And when, let me tell you this too, when you're disconnected from yourself, not even your faith matters. If your faith is a part of who you are, it is going to disconnect you from your faith as well. You're the only person walking in your shoes. You're the only per person experiencing life as you and your faith is a part of that. The more you destroy your temple, the harder it is for the Holy Spirit to swiftly live in you. You have to prioritize how you speak about yourself. You have to prioritize what you put into your body, not just from an external sense, like music and, and um, environments, but like the way that people also view themselves. How do people treat themselves? How did you grow up? How do you feel about yourself? Those things matter because those things, if, if your self-talk can separate you from having, from being grounded as a person, your self-talk can separate you from God, separate you from your intimacy with God because you're not going to care about anything. When times get really tough, I promise you, you're not going to care about anything, not even your relationship with God. And I say that from experience. I'm not saying that everyone goes through it because some people, they have a little bit of, of, of thick skin and they have tenacity and they're able to get through it. But I just, I don't understand why we tend to be so degrading of ourselves when God doesn't say those things about us because of what Jesus Christ has done. You know how many times the Bible in general tells us, be confident, don't fear, be confident, don't fear, be confident, don't fear. But we're afraid that having some type of concept of ourselves, love for ourselves, understanding of ourselves is a this to God. God made you. If God makes you, take care of what he made. In your Bible study, I want you to pay attention to something. We see, for example, Paul. Since Paul has written a lot of the New Testament, we will see this pattern where, first of all, Paul would always end most of his letters in, I pray that you grow in your knowledge of Christ. Um, so the key factor to growth is understanding, knowledge and understanding. One thing that I would challenge believers is to not only grow in their knowledge and understanding of the word, but they're growing their knowledge and the understanding of themselves, that they would actually take the time to dissect who they are and question, hmm, why am I like this? Why does this trigger me? Why, why, why do I like this? Why don't I like this? And the reason why I say that is because you ever go to a church or you hear about churches where you meet people and they have really bad character, they love the Lord, they love God, but they have really bad character, They're, they cause a lot of trauma to people. It's because these people um, are insecure, 
they are not healed um and honestly they just think that their power in the spirit or their power in how well they can pray and fast and how well they look in front of the the church congregation or in front of people is just enough to get them by in their faith but it's not i hate to break it to you but praying and fasting is a tool to build up your spirit man but true sanctification mental work spiritual um emotional work um understanding what has made you everything up what has made you who you are today and how to become more christ-like that is your work with the strength of the holy spirit yes that is your work to do the day by days the lessons that you learn in your days the um the things that make you who you who you are in the future up until this point literally taking the time to piece out and uproot all of those things in your life that don't make you the best version that god has called you to be this is what needs to happen in order for us to represent Christ the most. Yes, God will reveal things to you. God will show you, hey, you need to change this. Hey, you need to change that. But if you want to make that job easier for God, do the work yourself. Ask the Holy Spirit, hey, God, I know I got things to work on. I got things to change. I got things to do. Help me as I navigate this help me to heal my soul help me to grieve so i can move forward help me to mourn so i, I can move forward help me to not um <clears throat> self-deprecate so i don't make myself worse because i want to be the best version of myself um in christ so that i can do what you've called me to do because at the end of the day i want you to remember that your fruit matter your character matter it doesn't matter what you do in this earth if nobody can look at your tree and pick the fruit that you bear and eat of it and and benefit from who you are because you're because of your christ likeness you're not doing what you're supposed to do i don't care what i don't care if you're an apostle you're a prophet you're a ceo you're a pastor you're a missionary you're a politician it doesn't matter what you are you can do any of those things but if your soul isn't right if your heart isn't right you'll never understand the power of truly being saved by christ because it's supposed to do an inner work. So you're probably wondering, okay, Kiara, how do I, how do I be proactive? What are some practical tips that I can do to really change how I view myself, stop hating on myself, and to see the fullness of God in me? What are some practical things I can do? Well, first, you need to be willing to sit down with yourself and take some time to dissect your heart. Ask yourself the tough questions. Why am I afraid of this? Kiara, why am I afraid of making these videos? I didn't want to do this. I didn't want to do this. But I started God noticing God telling me to do things as I intentionally decided to work on myself. God would tell me, hey, okay, it's time to leave this. Okay, cool. Go back to consecration. Cool. Now use your voice. If I can be honest, I am not in a position or I feel... Like I am not prepared to be making videos like this because I've haven't been on the I haven't done anything in a ministerial context for a very long time. So this scares me, especially with the lifestyle that I'm still coming out of. I don't feel prepared to come and talk on the internet about Jesus. I don't. It's not something that I'm not used to, and it's not that I don't have my gifts, and it's not that I don't have my wisdom, and it's not like I don't have things to say. Cause baby, I have a lot of things to say. But I just don't feel prepared for it. But God don't see that I'm not prepared. So I had to ask myself the hard question, why? Why are you afraid to meet new people? Why are you so triggered by this? When you answer that question, then ask yourself why to that question. And keep getting to the why until you hit rock bottom and your answer start to sound stupid. This is why God would tell us do not fear because he knows to the root of it, it's a really dumb reason why we're afraid. Sit with yourself. Go on solo dates. Take yourself out. Bring your word if you'd like. Or do something like a hobby or something. Something that will allow you to spend time with yourself. And that will allow you to be present so you can know what your voice sounds like. And you can also... <clears throat> what that does, it, it kind of detox your way of thinking. Um, and it brings you clarity. When you have clarity, or in a biblical sense, sobriety. Mental sobriety. 
it allows God's space to move in your life and it allows the Holy Spirit to speak with clarity to you. So you'll be able to decipher, okay, this is God's voice. This is my voice. Again, the reason why a lot of people don't know the difference between their voice and God's voice is because it's not God's voice they don't know. It's typically their voice they don't know. God's voice is very distinct because typically God is going to tell you something that you're not thinking about or that you wouldn't do. Another tip I would say is journal. Journal, 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 or write your thoughts down, brain dump, put your thoughts in an audio, put your thoughts in a, in a, on paper, journal. The reason why I say journal, it's because you'll be able to sift through some of the things that you're feeling, some of the things that you're thinking, and bring more clarity to the things that you need to work on. Um, <clears throat> and I would also say pray. Pray for God to not only be a part of this journey with you, actively but pray for god to give you understanding once you get into that place where you're bettering yourself bettering your self-talk um and lastly i'd be don't be afraid of making something like this an idol because you can't um i'm not telling you to be extremely obsessed with yourself and don't care about other people what i'm telling you is to really curate your relationship with you intertwined with your relationship with God. This is his house. Take care of it. You need to take care of it. It's your house. Take care of it. You can't you can't take a brush and scrub the corners. What that would equate to is how you talk to yourself. I kid you not. How you talk to yourself matters. It gives God a good place to live in. So when you change the way you speak, you change the way you treat yourself. You change the way you view yourself. What you're doing is you're allowing space for the Holy Spirit to say, okay, now we got a clean house. And it's not, when I say clean house, I'm not talking about righteousness or I'm not talking about um, sin per se. I'm not talking about what makes you clean is what Jesus did on the cross. When I say I have a clean house, I mean maintained. You notice that God cannot use insecure people. God cannot use people who view themselves less than that's why Moses God wanted Moses to speak to the king but Moses swore up and down he couldn't speak so he used Aaron if you continue to speak about yourself in a way that doesn't allow God to ask you to do certain things he's going to ask somebody else and at the end of the day how you speak about yourself is your fault Oh God, I can't do that. I'm to this. I'm to that. <laughs> and God's looking at you like, I don't know if you think that's supposed to impress me. I'm not saying be cocky and conceited in the sight of God, but show God, yes, you can trust me with this. I feel like I'm capable to correct you. God will not use insecure people. God will not use people that degrade and de deprecate themselves because he knows in it, he knows that eventually he's gonna, you're going to run into a place where you're talking yourself out of the thing. The reason why you sabotage the plans of God in your life is because you're ultimately sabotaging yourself. When you feel like you can't do something, you ultimately feel like, well, I can't trust God for something. That comes from the pain you cause yourself when you sabotage things. Because God is like, I want to give you this. I want to give you this, but you won't let me because you don't think you deserve it or you don't think you can have it or you don't think you're capable to maintain it. How you view yourself determines, it really does determine what you're worth having when it comes to what God wants to give you. I mean, I'm just saying because it's very clear that like, even in my past, there are so many things I've mismanaged because of how I view myself. And so why, would, why wouldn't why would it crumble? And then with the, the thing about God is a lot of these things are intangible. So I have to speak about it in an intangible way. Yes, if you get, if you get a spouse or you meet your spouse and y'all are just courting, right? Yes, you have to physically take care of this person, physically be prepared to help this person and vice versa, be a partner to this person. But there's a lot of things you need to work on to in yourself so that you don't project. A lot of how we view God is a projection of ourselves. And it's also a projection of the, experience of what is the experiences in life that we've been through. 
that ultimately affect our perspective. Change how you view yourself. It's not a crime. It's not a sin. It's not a crime. Just ask God to move in that process with you. That's why in the word, there's so much things that God say that affirm his children. God needs you to be affirmed and grounded in yourself so that he can do the thing that he's called you to do. And I want to preface by saying, this is not, what I'm talking about is not a salvation thing. It's not a get to heaven thing. This, that's not what I'm talking about. This is not the main thing you need to do. I'm not talking about what you need to do to um, get to heaven or to be saved. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about specifically is what you need to do to be effective in the kingdom and to be effective in what you're called to do. And ultimately, just to live a, a life of better quality. The people who have the worst quality of life are the people who hate themselves, are people who don't care about themselves, and are people who don't actualize with themselves or don't have any self-awareness, so they can't fix any of the problems of their life. It, it starts here. It has always started here. Sin starts here. Problems start here. Everything starts here. All in all, the reason why I wanted to share this with you is because it actually really saves me. I spoke so bad about myself and so bad about my future, so bad about where I was that I it caused me to hate, be riddled in self-hate. I hated myself. It caused me to hate myself. So much so to the point where I couldn't even look in the mirror because of how much I didn't like what I saw internally and externally. Naturally, I'm a confident person. When I step outside, I step into rooms like I own them. I would know how to talk to people. I had a great posture. Like, you know, people, I am not that shy. I'm not that insecure as far as what I exude. But when I was by myself, boy, I was so insecure. And it's funny because I really don't care what people, about, what people think about me. But if I had the fear of man, I was the man that I feared. I cared so much about what I thought about myself. And because all I thought of myself was negative things, you can imagine what that did to me. It destroyed my soul. It destroyed my heart for God. And that's really my testimony, which I'll make a video about. But it destroyed, it almost destroyed my relationship with God. Like I was in shambles, pieces, crumbles, like crumbs. But um, God is starting to build me back up together and it's a journey. And I remember I just decided, you know what, I'm gonna change my self-talk. It started with me giving myself a hug and I needed that hug. And I imagined hugging my little self, my little, you know, my little me. And I remember having this vision where I was talking to my therapist at the time and I had this vision where I saw, I was watching um, these little girls pick on these big girls pick on this little girl and the little girl was me and when I went to confront the big girls they were me as well and I, it made me cry because I didn't realize how much I harmed myself that way I was harming myself it's one thing to physically harm yourself but it's another thing to internally harm yourself. It's like you're living, but you're dead on the inside. That's what your words do to you when you speak of yourself in a certain way. Um, so yeah, I remember I started from there and it took me a while to actually become consistent. And I was so used to not having peace that one day I decided, you know what, like, you know, peace is normal for you. And it was up from there. I wanna save my testimony but now I'm in a place like when I look at myself, I love what I see. I almost cry tears of joy because I'm so proud of the progress that I've made with loving myself again. And it has made me, it's softened my heart towards God. I hope this has helped you. Again, if you liked this video or it helped you, like the video. If you want to have stuff to share and you want to connect in the comments, comment on this video. And if you overall just like this vibe and you like these types of conversations that people don't really have on the internet, subscribe because there is more coming. I love you, but God loves you more. And I'll see you next time. Bye.